Welcome to the TK Show with the Athletic Bay Area's Editor-in-Chief, Tim Kawakami. Everybody, Tim Kawakami here, the TK Show, recording from Warriors practice right after their Friday practice on the eve of Game 1 of the playoffs against San Antonio. Really glad to have as my guest. Many time TK Show appearance for Ron Adams, assistant coach of the Warriors. Ron, how are you doing today? Good to have you on. Thank you. Good to okay. see you. Okay, playoffs. Switch just got flipped today? You just flipped the switch? Is that what happened yesterday? <laughs> or, or do you still not sure what you might see in Game 1? Well, I know what I'd like to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, the playoffs are always interesting. Uh, but season ends, and then you, you really start focusing on one opponent for a series of games. And uh, it's great, too, because uh, the players lock in. Uh, they're given more data. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a much more focused process in, in terms of playing which uh, I enjoy. Did you see that in the last two practices from your guys? I think we had good practices, yeah. But I think, uh, they're, uh, I think they're ready to get started and, uh, on uh, defending our crown. But uh, we're going to have to uh, obviously pick our game up from these, this last month or so. How, does, how do you, you're no, you know, noted perfectionist, somebody who really... You know the technique of this game and the, the passion of this game you're so involved with how did you judge how do you go through the last few weeks when the team obviously with injuries but maybe the passion wasn't really there uh, maybe the technique wasn't really there how, how do you view those last few weeks well from a purist standpoint it's they're, they're tough uh, our season in general we played really up and down uh, we played you know in many games a couple of good quarters and we've won the game uh, at times we played, uh, you know, consistent games, but it's really been uh, it's really been an interesting season, a different season. It was, uh, it's also uh, part of uh, our process here. Uh, Coach Fisdale is here, and we were just ta- yep. we were just talking this morning about. Uh, he was telling me about their their fourth year at Miami, and I was just describing our fourth year here and. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think as a coach you want consistency, which is not always hard, uh, easy to arrive at at this level, uh, especially with a team that has played deep in the playoffs for a number of years. But uh, it's still, you know, ingrained in you that uh, this consistency, this process that you have to follow uh, must be in place. So, Do you find yourself easing off a little? I mean, you're not an ease-up guy, but did you find, you know, think that in your mind it's something like okay I, I do need to let up on these guys they played a lot of games in the last four years I would not say ease up is what comes to mind for me but um, you know you want to encourage you want to continue on in the vein that uh, made us successful uh, certainly and uh, um, it's uh, it's it's funny how every team I've ever been associated with is different one year to the next uh, sometimes better sometimes worse but the dynamic is always different so the dynamic has been been a bit different this year um, you adjust to it you try to understand it you try to uh, um, lift you know the, the the level of play and so on uh, given the factors that you have given the, the, the fact that we you know, we have played a lot of basketball, and uh, our guys are kind of playoff-oriented, all of these kinds of things. And then the injuries came. So, uh, Maybe is there something you could say that's been overlooked, that's been good about this season? What would you, like, what would you underline? Say, okay, we did something here. Other than you won 58 games with Steph Curry missing, what, 31 games? Uh, what did you like about this season? Well, I think the 58 wins were significant. That's still a lot of winning. Uh, uh, I think uh, it was a year in which uh, some of our young guys had a chance to uh, to develop and uh, I think that was important for us even uh, even though we weren't winning uh, games at the rate that we're used to I think 
during this last month or so, we had a number of, uh, of our younger players uh, with the opportunity for minutes, and uh, I thought they grew. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we have, I mean, we always have a great time with this group. I mean, I, I want to be positive, certainly about that. I mean, it's a great group every day. Uh, it's fun to be around them. Um, so from that standpoint, it was a good year uh, again, and is always with these guys. You know, we just have a good mix of guys. You mentioned the young guys. I mean, you've worked with Damian closely for two years. You've worked with Kevon. You've worked with these. So this is something that you know you've really did dedicate a lot of time. Jordan Bell, another guy. Why did it happen this year for? for I'll just say Damian. What did you sense? I, I, I tried to ask Steve this. He, he kind of. Didn't, t- didn't tell me. Why did you guys put him in when you did? It just seemed kind of random, but I'm sure you guys don't act randomly with this stuff. Well, Steve Steve likes to test people, and, uh, you know, that's part of it. Um, I think Damien had a really good year in the, in the G League. Um, I think he's a very talented player. He has a, a good skill set. Uh, I like him defensively. I like his quickness and... Uh, I think he follows the game plan well. A lot of a lot of really positive things. But uh, you know, Steve is good about playing people in some in some cases at critical times, just to see uh, what the response will be. And uh, I think he's ma- he's played his minutes pretty well. Uh, you know, the latter part of the year. Uh, I think uh, Kevon Looney, uh, Chris uh, Demarco's done a great job with uh, Kevon uh, and. Uh, you know, Kevon is a good worker. I'm, I'm really happy for him because of the injuries coming in. And he stayed with it and uh, changed his body around. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good things. But he's a player who Steve has a lot of confidence in right now, which has been great to see. And uh, Jordan has uh, really had some good moments. And then he's had rookie mo- moments. But... Uh, I think he has a bright future, and I think he's made good progress this year. And uh, I think this summer will be important for him because I think he can be a, an important player in our program. We've all said it, and I'm going to ask you. I mean, we can pretty much see that Looney is going to be uh, huge in the rotation in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you see Damian and, and Jordan getting in, getting playoff minutes, maybe even ahead of some of the veteran guys? Uh, that would probably be a stretch at the moment, yeah. Uh, I think it's not to say that uh, Steve would not put them in a, in, a, in, a situational, in a situation that maybe is conducive to uh, what either one of those guys bring, but uh, I think uh, you know, more of the vets and so on will probably be called, called on. What are the, what's it like to not actually have a starting center at least you know by traditional standards do you spend a lot of time talking about that in in there like how you set up this constantly changing rotation well it's kind of more like who we're playing uh the success our centers have had against a given player uh also perhaps who's playing well who's had a nice streak of games you know who's playing at a high level um each person is different so you know they bring a different skill set to the game so that's kind of intriguing trying to figure that out but uh, I think uh, everyone will be ready and uh, you know it's it's not rocket science Um, you know going into this series I think both of our big guys can be effective Um, and uh, I think everyone just has to be flexible and ready to go when they're when they're called to, to, to do so. You, both your big guys, meaning JaVale and, and Zaza, yeah. is mm-hmm. your main guys. Uh, does that change the way the defense play? I mean, obviously, they're, they're different guys, but is it basically guys who play the pick and roll and guys who don't play the pick and roll is, is how you look at it right now? Well, again, each, has, each of those guys has a different skill set. Um, and... Uh, you know, we just try to look at what they do, what they have historically done for us, and then, you know, uh, put the matchup together because of that. Uh, Z has strengths defensively. 
that perhaps JaVale doesn't have, but then I could say the same about JaVale, uh, who plays above the rim and so on. So it's not, uh, again, it's just each individual is different. Cavan uh, uh, will probably play some five for us too or get smarter, smaller lineups, so he brings a, a different dimension also. So uh, everyone is not the same, obviously, on a roster. You do have people like uh, uh, Kevin who can do any, you know, everything, but uh, that isn't always the case. And so uh, you know, we just try to size up who we're playing, who the, what the matchup is, and uh, go from there. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our friends at Hims, a new wellness brand for men. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? I know some of you Warriors fans have used that line when talking about a certain Eastern Conference rival, but it's not funny when it starts happening to you. 66% of men lose their hair by age 35. Thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. Do you want your hairline to recede or do you want to do something about it? Luckily, we've got a solution for you. 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss and more for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. No weird snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. These prescription solutions are backed by science. Save hours by going to 4 It's so easy. Answer a few quick questions, a doctor will review and prescribe you products, and they are shipped directly to your door. Now is your chance to order. TK's listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds of dollars if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. So, go to 4 slash TK. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash tk for hymns.com slash tk now back to the tk show i was asking durant about this kevin durant uh it does feel like you guys like putting him on some really challenging matchups almost one because he's so versatile defensively but also it gets him in the game uh is that at all part of this that like he just seems more energetic when he's got some kind of big defensive matchup that he knows he's got well I think that's true of him uh, and uh, you know he's been <laughs> he's pretty he's so flexible I mean he can guard point guards he can do most everything and that's what makes it uh, good for us uh, his versatility obviously uh, but I think he does rise to the challenge of, uh, of a good matchup a challenging matchup yeah uh, okay San Antonio Spurs you guys have played them before um, some questions about who's going to play or who's not going to play, but when you get them on your, you know, on your draw, what do you think? Well, I think it's it's a, a you know, they're a really solid team. Um, I think uh, they're a team that we match up to pretty well uh, going in. They probably feel the same way about us. Uh, so we know what we're getting in. San Antonio, if you don't start games well, they're going to bury you. Um, they're a very good defensive team. They're a physical team, and of course the physicality of the playoffs are different from regular season. Um, and uh, they have, they play a number of people. So, you know, they're they're the gold standard for, for many years. They're in the playoffs again. I guess they didn't win their 50 games this year, which was unusual. But, uh, you know, they too had some extenuating circumstances, obviously from uh, injuries and uh, Leonard not playing and so on. What happened that game one last season when they got up by 23-24, obviously before Kawhi got hurt? What was going on there? Well, I think we were a little flat. I think uh, San Antonio makes you flat if you're not ready to to uh, go uh, full bore after that, the, the toss starts the game, you know, you can, uh, you can have problems with them. We actually started to make a pretty good comeback in that game when Leonard was still in the game, but we had a ways to go uh, to get back in it. But if you look at many of our games with them, we've gotten down big and came 
came back in the game, but that's not how we want to do it this series. Um, our team is different without Steph, and uh, I think from the get-go, we have to really be locked in and playing well. Obviously, so much focus on Marcus Aldridge, and you guys have always had a lot of defensive focus on Marcus Aldridge. Uh, do you st I know you sent a lot of different guys at him and you kind of poked at him. Uh, I don't want you to, I'm not asking you to give up defensive strategy here, but do you imagine that's going to be similar this, this series? Well, all I'll say on that score is that there's no easy way to play him. And uh, we have to be extremely alert when he has the ball. Uh, you know, We'll try to do the best one-on-one. -on -one. We'll try to do the best with team activity. You know, all those things go into it. But uh, he's really improved his game. He can make a three-point shot now, and uh, he can drive the ball. Uh, coming out of college, I thought he had two pro skills uh, that were going to serve him well, and that was the jump hook, right-hand jump hook, and the turnaround shot, which he's perfected, and, and they've been f fantastic shots for him in the pros. So. He presents problems, and you know we have to be ready for them. Ron, what did you think about this, your team's defense throughout the season? It statistically slipped. Individually, you could see some of the numbers slipped. Um, what, what do you attribute that to, to, to the long seasons? How do you credit this statistical slip, at least? Well, I think there were a number of factors involved in that. I think it was kind of our approach to the season you know um, uh, I think our preseason in my mind did not help us China but also a, a shortened preseason we had a lot of new people on our team and uh, that didn't help them uh, but I think in, in, in looking at it uh, from a number of standpoints which I did uh, we had a new bench for the most part I mean Sean is, is back, Andre's back, and the rest of the people are new. And uh, I think that was a, it was a steep learning curve for many of our new guys. Uh, Kevon proved to be very solid through this and got better week after week defensively. Um, but I think all of the ep elements coupled together, beginning of the season, uh, a team that had played late in the playoffs, you know, every year playing for the championship, winning championships, uh, and then new people. Um, you know, it made for a, a challenging mix, and uh, uh, I guess my, my only thought as a coach is I like consistent performance, you know that, I mean, you know, you want to play as many possessions well as you can play. You want to build a habit of doing that. And uh, I thought we were unlike the teams of the first three years in, in that regard. Uh, still managed, still won a lot of games. Could have won a lot more without injuries, certainly. Uh, but uh, that was kind of the nature of the season. And, uh, you know, again, we're starting a new, a new season. And now it's every possession. You know, we're, we're going to have to play every possession well. You, you mentioned the bench, and there were, you know, two, three, four different people to it. Uh, one thing I've been tracking for a while is that it takes a different kind of personality or a certain kind of personality to kind of blend in with Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, especially to take shots. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would think, oh, you're, you're an NBA player. You just take the shot if it's open. And we have seen it, and I, I mean, I'll name, you know, Patrick McCaws mentioned that it's sometimes you get a little nervous when you're on the court and taking a shot, and <laughs> Steph Curry's 10 feet away, <laughs> Kevin Durant. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I think Nick Young is even, I mean, even Nick Young has mentioned this, and I think Omri Caspi certainly went through that. Uh, have you guys accounted for that, or is that something you guys have noted, and how do you kind of coach around that? Hmm, well, that's an interesting point you make. Um... I think when you're playing with great players who can shoot the ball, uh, they're certainly the priority uh, if you're on the floor with the group that you mentioned. But in turn, I think many of our guys want our guy, the other guys when they're open to shoot the ball and shoot it with confidence. I think what happens if you're a player coming in and you're used to taking a lot of shots, your number of shots that present themselves for you 
uh, diminish. It's not like perhaps another team you've been with. So I do think that puts a little more pressure on a shooter. Uh, fewer shots. Got guys who can make shots. I got to make these shots. I could see that. But I don't think that's anything that we've dwelled on much as a, as a staff. Um, I think uh, I think our veteran players, our star players, are very encouraging. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, it was interesting to see the uh, uh, Damien the other day uh, when he played uh, really well against. Uh, <laughs> uh, Oklahoma City and uh, I thought it was such a great growing uh, experience for him because of the way the veteran players got so excited about what he was doing and then just kind of like infused him with a lot of confidence and so any young player needs that now Dray uh, Damien isn't out there you know taking a lot of shots you know he's when he plays with our stars, he has a, a pretty tight role and, and uh, did it well that night. Uh, but I think uh, in general, this team, especially, you know what, Steph, Draymond, go down the list. With, when someone off the bench does something well, I think they are so excited about it because they're very encouraging people in that regard. And I thought Jordan really from the outset seemed to be confident in that role. I mean, he wasn't going to take 20 shots, but he mm -hmm. seemed very, very, uh, you know, fluid with it, with, yep. with the stars. Then then it has kind of stopped. Have you have you guys noticed that? Or is that just something that, okay, he's been hurt and he's been in and out? I think he, he early on he was in a, a good rhythm. Uh, I think the injury, the, the major injury, really took him out of it. And... Uh, when he came back, his body took a long time to kind of readjust, and I would say that he's getting close to his athleticism of the early part of the year, but uh, maybe not quite there yet even. Uh, so, um, but look, he's, uh, <laughs> he's a rookie, and uh, he's got to figure out how to do things not having in his... Uh, toolkit uh, a three-point shot for example so the way he scores is uh, kind of unique to his skill set uh, I think he finished up the season making 62 percent of his field goals so he was around the rim he was dunking the ball he was in transition this kind of stuff so uh, I think a case could be made that he fit in well to the team offensively even given his skill set I think he wants to expand his skill set I mean he has to I think be a become a consistent 15 16 foot shooter that's the next uh, that's the next goal I I would think and then maybe expand his shooting uh, range out from there but um, um, I think he was really set back when yep. when he got hurt yep well, that's about one other young player Quinn Cook obviously out of the G League into the starting lineup in the playoffs for the defending champions. What do you think made him able to do that? Uh, just where we've seen so many others, do you think that guy's got talent, he just can't quite do something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, in this league, it's many times the right guy at the right time. He was the right guy at the right time. He was having a terrific G League season. I mean, terrific. Uh, and when he would come to us, he was a very confident player. And uh, I think his on-court demeanor is really good. Uh, I think he's a person who's very comfortable in his own skin, comfortable in his, in his own skills, and it shows when he gets on the court. Um, offensively, he's been terrific. Defensively, he needs to keep grinding, and uh, he will, I think he will do that. Uh, but I, I, I think the thing aside from just the, uh, the uh, results that he brought to a game in terms of his scoring, I just think is his attitude. Um, I think he's been really a, a, a good person to have on our team. I think he's a connector. I think guys like him and, uh, and encourage him and, and in turn he does the same to them. I think that's been an important element of him being here. 
I definitely saw him getting attacked defensively, certainly at the you know, last three, four games. Uh, how do you do you scheme around that, or you just say Cause you got to hold up? They're gonna they're gonna pick and roll, and they're going at you, and you got to hold up. Well, as you know, we have a pretty uniform team, uh, with exception of in terms of size, with exception of, of Steph and uh, and Quinn. Uh, but we have to do things a, a bit differently in ball screens, in some ball screens with him, perhaps. Uh, uh, but the 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 template for Quinn to follow is at his size he has to be the hardest working dude on the floor and this is what I've outlined to him yeah. he's got to be the most aggressive not only defensively but offensively he's got to be aggressive too and um, I think from a cerebral standpoint he understands that and I think from a physical standpoint uh, he is working on that but I think that's going to be his his next his next big step up and that will be the uh, uh, internalizing the force hmm. necessary for him to make it to that next level which I think he's capable of making it seems to. like a Patrick Beverly sort of thing nobody's like Patrick Beverly but just I'm going to go a thousand miles per hour yeah I think that's going to be important for him I think he's capable of that uh, Coupled with his offensive game, which is really uh, solid, uh, I, I think he has a he has growth in him. Yeah. yeah obviously, you are such a switch base, switch almost everything. But with this, with Quinn and maybe with Steph, have you encouraged them to get through the screen and don't switch as much? Well, we try not to switch certain things as much, um, and uh, we want to protect them. Um, but at the same time, there are so many situations in which they do uh, switch. And, like, there are big guys in this league who are really good shooters, but a, a guy like Steph can guard them. He just has to get into them on the perimeter at the three-point line, and they back him down or whatever. We, you know, we uh, uh, see it and respond to it. Um, and... Any team that's going to, uh, you know, try to force the ball in against a smaller player doesn't really fit into a lot of teams' philosophy. Yep. Occasionally, yep. it works for them, but so um, we do not want to disadvantage our smaller players simply because of the fouls, maybe that they could pick up. But uh, we want to be mindful of them and, and try to protect them, which I think uh, over the years we've done a, a pretty good job of. All right, Ron, I've asked you this question before, and I know the answer favorite restaurant <laughs> but I'll Walters always gets the vote what's your second favorite well, or you could all talk about Walters which is an incredible restaurant in Salt Lake City but give me give me one of your favorite restaurants Ron you mean locally anywhere anywhere because Walters was well Walters was a great one well I like Italian yeah. food I like uh, on the East Bay I really I think Bellotti's is a you know outstanding where's that what city Bellotti's is in Oakland okay yeah and uh I like Corso in Berkeley, really a fine restaurant. I like the people there too. I mean, look, part, part of, there are so many good restaurants in our area and I frequent, when I have time, you know, a lot of different restaurants and such good, good food and such great chefs and organizations here. But what really makes a restaurant is the, the person who runs it. And uh, so the people that you meet at restaurants, if you go there frequently, you develop a relationship. And the food always tastes better and the wine tastes better because of that. Uh, Walter, in, uh, Walter Nassi in, uh, in Salt Lake City, for example, is, uh, I would be hard pressed to find, to name over the course of, you know, my 50 years in sports, a better host. So... Even if his food was mediocre, maybe you would have not gone back, but you would have prob probably gone back to say hello to Walter because he's such a wonderful human being. And he's so in love with his food and the people who eat his food. So uh, there's a, uh, a wide swath of items that make for a great restaurant. Number one, the food has got to be yeah. really good. But then it's a lot of other things. And the food, by the way, Falters is incredible. It is, yeah. And you walk in and you say, you know, we're on Adams. Uh, you get taken care of. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you get taken care of. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's the show for today, Bron. I really appreciate it. As always, great conversation. 
Uh, I could talk basketball with you forever and almost always do. So uh, thank you very much, Ron. Thank you. That's the DK Show, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>